What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ramble for Radio. I am your host, Gen T, Twitter and Instagram at Gen T five two three. What's good, motherfuckers? <laughs> you already know it's tough for fight night. We're talking UFC fights. We don't talk about Bellator anymore because it's on Thursdays. And I don't record on Thursdays, motherfucker. (laughs) So we're talking UFC fight night because that's tonight. But before I do, if you don't like UFC picks, if you don't like UFC, if you don't like MMA, you don't like violence, if the ultra violence, then please fast forward to the 10 minute mark because this will not be for you. (laughs) Because <laughs> we're talking fucking fights. I need a minute to myself. So I won't have a good me. <laughs> Got your UFC Fight Night picks. Felder versus Dos Anjos. Here we fucking go. First off, first fight, I've got Don Tail. Duck Tails. Who? <laughs> May 7 and 4. Four KOs, one subs, two decisions versus Roque Martinez. Eight KOs, three subs, 14. Four decisions, 15 and 6. Yeesh. If you saw these two motherfuckers on the street, <laughs> you would not pick either. <laughs> oh my god, I went to Share Dog just to check out their profile. Holy shit. Look like two homeless men. Some kind of bum fights to start off the UFC. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Don Tail. It's not even Don Tay. It's Don Tail. There's a, a Don and, a, and an apostrophe and then Tail. So I'm out of there. I can't with that name. It's good. No, I'm sorry. I'm, it's going to be Roque Martinez. Next, I've got Tony Granley, 19 and 6, 8 KOs, 3 subs, 8 decisions versus Geraldo de Fritas Jr. 12 and 5, 4 KOs, 5 subs, 3 decisions. I'm going with Geraldo. Next, Random Marcos, 10 and 9, 4 subs, 6 decisions. Jesus Christ, lady. Versus Conico Brata, 11 and 1, 2 KOs, 4 subs, 3 decisions. Akuna versus Rikazeros, Kurta Marata, versus Random Marcos. It a red gonna touch, touch, each knee, sign. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Random Marcos, I've just, I've never been impressed. This, this bitch has somehow managed to weasel her way out of the Ultimate Fighter house with a UFC contract and, like, lose three or four and win one. And then <laughs> lose three or four and then win one. I just, I can't, I can't. I can't get behind that. I don't I don't trust that. She is a true stepping stone, and I feel like Kriko Marata is going to knock this bitch out. Next, Luis Fat Ass Smoker. Now I can say that because I is fat, I is Patty McFatty. So I can say that. And I saying fat ass smoker because motherfucker didn't make weight. Okay? Luis Smoker, 16 and 7, 7 KO, 7 subs, 2 decisions, versus Jose Alberto 
Quiones, eight and four, two KOs, five, one sub, five decisions. I'm taking Luis Smolka because apparently when you don't make weight, but you still continue the fight, I think those fighters are like eight and one or nine and two or something. So I'm taking Luis Smolka to beat Jose Quiones. Next, Alex Moreno, 17 and six, five KOs, six subs, five decisions versus Chris McKee. 10 and 3, 7 KOs, 3 subs. Hmm. Well, Rise last fight didn't last very long. I think he was in the round with Hamzat Shemaev for maybe less than a minute and was taken down to the ground and pummeled to death. <laughs> so I'm surprised that he was resuscitated back to life and given another fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days <laughs> oh shit so <laughs> at first i was like yeah no rise mckee he's tall he's six foot 25 he's got good range and he did awesome cage warriors and then i remembered oh you got beat by comes at nah <laughs> i'm good next i've got ashley yoda team quest tamikula seven and six four subs three decisions versus miranda Rager, 7 and 1, 1 KO, 5 subs, 1 decision. Ashley Yoder, God bless her little heart. Again, another lady fighter who I am disturbed that is still employed by the UFC. <laughs> Wins one, loses four. <laughs> it's amazing. Man, if I could just get to like 155 or 145, I could like win one fight and lose four and still have a job. It's remarkable. I love it. Props to the UFC for being so kind to Ashley Yoder, but she is terrible. <laughs> Next, Brendan Allen, 15 and 3, 5 KOs, 8 subs, 2 decisions versus Sean Strickland. Rook, 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 Riverside, motherfucker. Sean Strickland, 21 and 3, 9 KOs, 4 subs, 8 decisions. As you know, Sean Strickland was on a long layoff, but just had a fight three or four weeks ago. There was an opponent change. Oh, Ian Heisich came down with the Rona. So they Brendan did not have an opponent, so they switched that up. And now Ian Heinz is going to fight fucking shit. He's going to fight a uh, 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 brain fart. Uh, uh, Kelvin Gastelum. He's going to fight Kelvin. Holy shit, Ian Heinz versus Kelvin. That is going to be a fucking barn burner, man. Those two are going to box the shit out of each other. I can't wait to see that fight. So yeah, I'm picking Brendan Allen as much as Sean Strickland is a rook, 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 Riverside motherfucker. He's the, from the hometown. I cannot. Brendan Allen is a massive. He's like on a 10 fight win streak in UFC. So massive dude. Next, Antonio Arroyo, 93, four KOs, four subs, one decision versus Eric Anders. Eric, your boy, Anders, 13 and 5, 8 KOs, 1 sub, 4 decision. Listen, everybody was hooting and hollering about Eric, your boy, Anders, and I've just never jumped on the train. I just wasn't solid about this guy, and I have yet to be impressed, to be quite honest. I mean, he's gotten a couple wins, but it's been easy money, easy pickings betting against him and watching my wallet on human growth hormone. My pockets are all buff. <laughs> With some little Wayne in there. Eric Anders, your boy, has not done very good in the UFC. So I imagine he is going to do well since his job is on the line because he's terrible. But I am going to bet against him once again and pick Antonio Arroyo. Next, Kay Hansen from 10th Planet, Buena Park. Two KOs, four subs, one decision versus Corey McKenna. Five and one, two KOs, one subs, two decisions. Now, initially... I was picking Corey because I feel that English boxers have better boxing than American boxers, which has been proven time and time again. But Kay Hansen is at 10th Planet, Buena Park. So I have to root for 10th Planet since I attend 10th Planet as well. So we're rooting for Kay. Fuck Corey McKenna and the horse she rode in on. <laughs> Next, Abdul Razik Al Hassan, 10. And two, 10 KOs. And that's all you get from that guy. Start you, people. Kellen Williams, 10 and 1, 5 KOs, 1 sub, 4 decisions. I'm taking Abdul Razik Al Hassan for the win. And finally, 
Rafael Dos Anjos was initially supposed to fight. Who's who the fuck was he supposed to fight? Was it Darren Till? I forget. No, not Darren Till. Shit balls. It was somebody else. Fuck, I forgot. Well, that doesn't matter. He was supposed to fight somebody else. And Paul Felder has stepped in on four days' notice. He's taking his announcing coat off, putting the mic down, and getting in the ring. Paul Felder, 17 and 5. 10 KOs, 1 sub, 6 decisions. Rafael Dos Anjos, 29 and 13. 5 KOs, 10 subs, 14 decisions. On paper, this should be Rafael Dos Anjos, but I feel like. The ship has sailed on this man. Now, the ship might also have sailed as well on Paul Felder, but I truly believe he won that Dan Hooker fight. So that was his last fight he had. So I think he's got something to prove this time, you understand? And so I am taking Paul Felder on four days notice for the motherfucking upset. Let's go. So here are your final UFC picks. Roque Martinez. Geraldo De Pritas Jr. Conaco Mrata. Luis Patty McFaddy Smoker. Alex Moreno. Miranda Craig. Brendan Allen. Antonio Arroyo. K. Hanson. Abdul Razik Al Hassan. And Paul Felder. Those are my UFC picks. Bet with me, but against me. Who fucking cares? Let's watch some fights. It's time for customers of the week. Whew. This week, I, you know, I didn't think he would have the gumption, the nerve to come back to my work, but he did. Hit them hearts, hit them hearts, let's go. That's right, if you've heard my show before, then you know about hit them hearts, let's go. Mike, check, one, two, hit them hearts. He came fucking back. Except this time, you know, I thought, okay, hit them hearts was back, that he was going to start making a music video again, but this time he came in there with his dad, so he was a little bit more behaved, but he hit them hearts, was like, hit them hearts, and I was like, oh, snap. So I seen him, and I was like, oh, snap, it's hit them hearts, guy. And I was like, hello, sir, uh, did you need some help today? He's like, no, 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 I, I'm good, I'm good, sis, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just looking for the, the raw cacao. You got any of those cacao? You got cacao nibs here? You sell cacao nibs? I was like, uh, yeah, right in front of you. Ayo, hey, dad, ayo, hey, dad, they over here, they over here. There. Son, where them nibs at? Yo, where them nibs at? I was like, oh shit. <laughs> this branch doesn't fall far from the tree. Both of y'all are the hit them hearts squad. Hit them hearts. You want me to drop this next verse? Hit them hearts. I'm back making my music video in a grocery store. That's right. Your mom's a whore. Oh, hit them hearts. Pim, 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 pim. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, here you go. And then so I tried to go about my business, and then the both of them came up to me. Hey, yo, sis. Hey, yo, sis. Hey, yo, sis. Hey, we want to ask you a question. We want to ask you a question. Hey. I was like, uh, yeah, you can use your inside voice. Like, why are you guys yelling? I'm right here in front of you. <laughs> I'm like less than two feet away, and they're like, hey, yo, hey, yo, hit them boards. I'm like, uh, yeah. Hey, sis, I'm looking for Indian food in a tube. You got it? And I was like, what? Yeah, my pops is looking for Indian food in a tube. You got it? I was like, Indian food in a tube? What the fuck? Yo, don't y'all want to just go to Delhi Palace down the street? Come on. Just some fresh Indian food right there. Nah, 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 nah. We trying to make our own stuff. We trying to make our own stuff. Yeah, it's Indian food that comes in a tube. And I was like, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, I know that International Foods is on, like, number 12. Okay, thanks, sis. Appreciate you. Have a blessed day. Yeah. Yeah, sis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's like, what the fuck? Why are y'all so animated? Like, this ain't the fucking 106 in Park, fam. Like, yo, it's a regular-ass health food store. Chill out, man. 
Like people come in there to read books sometimes. <laughs> People want peace and quiet. They don't want to hear all that. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Bam, 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 bam. Hey, yo. Help us. We need the Indian food in a tube. First of all, why would you want to eat Indian food out of a tube? What the fuck is that, man? That is some horrendous shit. <laughs> they come running up to me later. They're like, hey, yo. We, 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 we found something that looks like our Indian food in a tube. Can y'all tell us where this is? And I was like, uh, what do you have? He shows me a fucking packet. A sauce packet. And I was like, bro, this is not a tube. This is a fucking sauce packet. <laughs> I was like, you stupid motherfucker. Yo, Indian food comes in a sauce packet, not a tube. Jesus Christ. He's like, yeah, it comes in this tube right here. Yeah, my dad's looking for Indian food in a tube like this. And I was like, oh, Indian food in a sauce packet? Yeah, that's on number 12. We didn't see nothing down there in a tube. And I was like, oh, God. And the homie comes up and walks by. He's like, what's going on? I was like, yo, <laughs> you're not going to believe this shit, man. <laughs> I was like, yo, hit them hearts is back. Uh, he's looking for Indian food in a fucking tube. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then my homie was like, damn, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, shit. So he's like, let me just show you where the Indian food's at. Took him down there. Got the food that came back with the fucking sauce packet like I thought it was. And they're like, this is it, sis. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, sis. This is it. Indian food in a tube. <laughs> I was like, uh, no, that's, that's, that's a packet. That's a little envelope with Indian spices in there that you add to food to make Indian food. Yeah, Indian food in a tube. <laughs> I was like, okay, have a nice day. What the fuck was that? Holy shit. Then I had the most awkward situation on Veterans Day. I had to help a lady who was either married to a vet or was actually a vet, but she had a an alleged service dog, which was a poodle. And me and poodles do not get along for some reason of all of the dog species I've met and encountered in my life and I've loved so much. A beloved friend of mine once had two poodles and attacked me when I was a young wee lass. And ever since then, poodles get nasty with me. They they bark, they growl. They have told all of their other little poodle friends to to start mess with me when they see me. So I didn't even realize this lady I was helping had a poodle service dog. And as I was helping her, trying to find makeup, which I know nothing about, <laughs> um, the dog starts growling. And I was like, uh, the fuck, bitch? Service dogs don't growl. And she's like, oh, uh, he's not growling at you. He's growling at his reflection in the window. And I was like, huh? And there's like a tiny little window in the cabinet. Where the makeup is at so people can look at the makeup. And I guess it was like facing kind of downward to him, towards him. But I was like, ah, I'm not buying that lady. This ain't a service dog. <laughs> you lying ass bitch. <laughs> but I salute your service if it was you. <laughs> um, but if not, I salute your husband and not you. Get out of here. But after we got done, after I got done helping her and her dog was kind of acting crazy. Um. She taps me on the wrist like a like good job. I was like, huh? The fuck, bitch? Why are you tapping me on the hand like I'm your pet? Hold up. Wait a minute, player. Uh, I'm gonna need you to rescind that tap. <laughs> oh shit. I was like, uh huh? She's like, good job. And she's like patting me on the hand. And I immediately went, ow. Come on, me. Ah! My wrists are incredibly bruised. I am a giant bruised fruit, as you all know. <laughs> this fruit bruises easily. Um, 
I have massive bruising on my wrist and swelling because uh, in Jusesu, <laughs> people are trying to get wrist control and we're always wrestling each other for the wrist and whatnot. So my shit is trashed, fam. And um, if I'm in the moment, I can ignore the pain, but she's smacking my hand to tell me good job. And I'm like, ow, bitch, hey, wait a minute. I did not sign up for your abuse, you understand? She's like, oh, oh. And then her service dog starts going, (laughs) in the middle of the fucking store. And I was just like, ow. I was like, please don't do that. She's like, but I always. And then I showed her my wrists. My wrists are black and blue. She's like, oh, dear. Did I do that? And I was like, no, but you irritated it, you fucko. <laughs> hey, <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> you can say thank you, or that's that'll suffice. <laughs> I don't need to be tapped on my wrist to let me know I did a good job. You can just tell me, hey, awesome, thanks for the help, <laughs> or good job. Ugh, so bizarre. She's like, I'm sorry. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I just had to get away from her and her dog. So I went outside for a break. And then she followed me outside and was like, thank you again. And I was like, yep, as long as you don't tap my wrist, we're cool. Bye. (laughs) Keep that dog away from me, (laughs) you bastard. (laughs) Some current events, some current events. I'm hearing the first order of duty from Uncle Joe Biden is to give a six-week mandatory lockdown. What the fuck? Hey! 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 Uncle Joe, wake your ass up! Have you been around lately? People need to fucking work. Do you like your economy? Do you like having your job? Well, guess what, bitch? If you shut everything down for six weeks, what the fuck are people supposed to do? You trying to kill people? You trying to pe- let people get the diabetes? You trying to shut people's fucking businesses down? You know, small businesses are barely surviving. They aren't surviving now. And now you want to do a mandatory six week lockdown? Fuck out of here, fam. Listen. Can you hear me? Because I know somebody from the government is listening. Attention. Attention. Aura. <laughs> Listen up now. I spoke with my teacher, who is a very, very, very smart man, and he and I both agreed. Open shit the fuck up. If you sick, don't feel comfortable, stay your ass home. Okay? Let me say that shit again. Open everything the fuck up. Get your ass back to work unless you're immunocompromised. All right? That's it. The end. Put your goddamn mask on, whether you believe it or not. Put that shit on. And uh, let's get to work, okay? Stopping everything is not going to stop the virus, okay? Here we are in fucking November. And y'all told everybody to stay home the first time. Things went down a little bit, and then you open up, shit went bad again, okay? But as soon as people come out, it's going to go up. So why don't you just let everybody out? Everybody get it. Get this sh- this fucking shared immunity shit going on. You either got it or you don't. And that's it. Take your chances. You need to be around good and bad bacteria. Can't be in a sterile environment 24-7. What is this fucking Howard Hughes shit? Come on, man. Let's figure it the fuck out. Your way ain't working. Another shutdown isn't going to tell a coronavirus isn't going to be like, oh, shit, they shutting down. Oh, damn. Let's go shut down, too. Now, if it is indeed airborne, which I believe it is, it's in the air. Ain't nothing you can fucking do about the air, man. You going to stop breathing for six fucking weeks? This is shit. This shit is fucking crazy, man. It's got to stop. Open everything the fuck up, put restrictions, mask on, sanitize stuff, do the things that we need to do. Listen, the first time we got this shit is because everybody was touching their booty holes and then touching their mouth, okay? 
and not washing their hands. Everybody was doing the old ATM, ass to mouth. <laughs> People were nasty as fuck, and that's how y'all got sick. So, we found out that this year, in 2020, people weren't washing their hands as, as well as they should have been. People weren't cleaning things as well as they should have been. So, and also, people aren't exercising like they should have been. Keep that immune system up. You got to be moving, not staying at home, out of the sunlight. Did you know you need vitamin D3? Did you know that? You need D3 for hormones. You need D3 for your immune system and your fucking bones. Okay, where's the best source of D3 out fucking side? Not staying indoors for six fucking weeks. Some bullshit. The man's wants you to stay indoors, get fat, get plugged into the matrix some more and buy all their fucking prescription pills and just wither away. I ain't fucking doing it, man. I ain't fucking doing it. I'm taking my ass to work. I've been working this whole goddamn time. Not by choice, (laughs) but I've been doing it and I feel like I'm better for it. And I've also been going to the gym. What's good? 10th Planet Redlands. I've been going to the fucking gym and I love it. Okay. I feel better. I feel stronger than I ever have been before. And I'm just feeling like, you know, more people should do jujitsu. The world would be a better place. If Uncle Joe did jujitsu, he'd be like six weeks shut down. Nah, nah, nah. Six weeks, full steam ahead, open the fuck up. It helps your mind, man. You're just at peace. This shit is so fucked up. I'm not sure if they're trying to shut stuff down or like redistribute wealth or what the fuck is this shit. But it's not going to work, fam. It's not working now. Americans need to work. They need jobs. People need to work. That gives them a sense of purpose. Whether it's a shitty job or not. You can't stay home for fucking ever. You notice how people, when they retire and they ain't working anymore and then they just sit on the couch for the the remainder of their life, they die faster. See? They, like, die within three to six years of retirement because they ain't active anymore. They ain't doing shit. They're just eating a bunch of processed food and watching fucking Maury Povich all day. Kid, this is crazy. Okay? We need to get back to work. It'll help people's minds. We need the gyms open. Stop with the fuck shit. You need to have a big ass Thanksgiving with a mask on, of course, if you want or not. We need to get back out there. I just really feel like shutting stuff down is only going to make shit worse. It's not going to help anybody. The COVID cases might go down for a little bit and then they're going to go back up. Okay. Because you've isolated people for so long and now their immune system doesn't know what to do with the new introduction of of bacteria into their life. So my thought is stay open, expose your fucking self, stay clean, of course, don't be like licking grocery carts or whatever, but, you know, get out there, get moving, get to exercise it, get busy, get to working. This is what's going to help make America be strong very mas fuerte okay (laughs) mas fuerte I want America to be strong okay and it's not gonna be strong if we're all fucking isolated and staying in our house for six fucking weeks they ain't gonna do shit it's gonna make it worse I promise you who wants to fucking bet me this shit is gonna hit the fucking fan and blow up in Uncle Joe's face okay it's not gonna get better it's gonna get worse but everybody else who's healthy who has two good hands and two, not even two good hands. If you got two bad hands and two left feet. Get the fuck out there and start working. Okay. <laughs> get your ass off the couch. Start doing some exercises. Sign up for 10th planet somewhere. I don't care where the fuck it's at. But get rolling man. Because you need some exercise in your life. You need a good sweat. You feel good. That helps your system. Your immune system get strong. Must work day. I had the strangest conversation with my mother. So as y'all know, I have talked about on here before that I've probably got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of basketball and baseball cards and football cards uh, from back in the day, way back in the day, like 30 years ago cards, okay, that are probably worth a shit ton of money. I don't know how we got on the subject, but we got 
to talking about those cards again. And I said, look, I'm trying to open up my own gym. I want to have my own little weightlifting gym in the morning. And then at nighttime, I want to go to 10th Planet. Okay. So I need capital to start this gym. And I was going over the dimensions and how much the guy wants and square footage and how much my monthly uh, lease would be and all that stuff. Okay. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, so I'm looking into this for a building and then I want to start buying machines. I want to buy a couple machines, nothing crazy, just like uh, a, like two rowers, a Stairmaster, a bike, an elliptical. That's it. You get them joints and then some kettlebells and a couple punching bags off to the races. Oh, and maybe the fucking uh, the uh, battle rope off to the races, okay? And I just want to have this gym from like six to six and then like go to 10th planet after work, you know? And, uh, I was kind of explaining to her my business plan and she's like, Oh no, that, you know, it's nice to have a dream, but uh, you need stability. Uh, oh wait. Oh, I should do a better mom voice. Oh, you, you want to, it, it's nice to have a dream. You want to have a dream, do you? But it's not stable. It's not stable. You, you need stability. And I was like, what? I was like, that's the whole point of doing this dream. I'm taking a risk. Well, you better have enough money and be prepared to lose. Are you prepared to lose all that money? And I said, yeah. And she goes, Wow. So you mean to tell me if I gave you $30,000 worth of Apple stock and you sat on that for three years, that's going to make you more money than that gym of yours? And it's like, um, I'd rather take that 30 k and invest it in myself than take that 30 k and give it to Apple, and I'm still miserable at my shitty j- day job, okay? I'm miserable at my day job, okay? It is mindless, same shit, different day, any motherfucker off the street could do my job, okay? It's not important to me. My Dreams, my goals. I'm passionate about weightlifting. I'm passionate about MMA. I'm passionate about uh, strength and conditioning. I'm passionate about vitamins. I don't really care for all the rest of the stuff. It's nice, but I don't give a shit. Okay? It doesn't move me. What gets me out of bed is the fact that I get to go to the gym after work. That's all I care about. Okay? So the fact that my mom can't see this is like, so strange for me. It was almost like an out-of-body experience because she's incredibly smart. Uh, two different colleges, master's degree, bachelor's degree, the whole nine. She's got all these fucking degrees. And yet when it comes to a dream, that's not practical. You need to take that money and invest it in an Apple, Apple stock. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about Apple. <laughs> no fuck, bitch. That's somebody else's dream, fam. I'm trying to support my dream. Can't you see that? So you mean to tell me you would throw away $30,000 on a dream than have Apple stock? Yes, mom. Because that $30,000 going toward my dream would be one less, one more step closer to my dream and investing in myself and fulfilling that dream than working for somebody else's dream and being uninspired, feeling empty day after day between the hours of da-da-da and da-da-da, okay? I said, it's not serving me. It's no longer serving me. And I struggle to even get to work on time because psychologically, I just don't want to go because I know it's not what I care about. And I explained to her, I said, mom, There are some days where I wake up three hours early before work and I'm still 15 minutes late because I just don't want to go. I've literally hid my keys from myself. I've hid my shoes and I got a house full of fucking shoes and I want to wear this one pair. I can't fucking find. (laughs) 
I forget my gym clothes, got to drive back home because that's the most important part. It's not even going to work. It's when can I get to the fucking gym? That's really all I care about. And she just could not see it. She's like, well, okay, so you don't like working there. Why don't you get a job at the school district? And I was like, the school district? You've seen my grades. I don't belong anywhere near a school. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, no. I was like, oh, no, lady. You, you, <laughs> you losing it right now. She's just like, why don't you get a job at the school district? I'm sure that'll be better. I said, no, that that's not my dream to work at the school district. I know it's not your dream, but it's something dependable. So you get benefits. And I said, I'm telling you right now, I would rather pay out of pocket, not have any benefits for the first three years. If that meant to get my business up and running that I don't have any benefits, then I would fucking do it. Honestly, I would do it. I'm at the point I'm pulling a Rob Bailey. I'm pulling a Rob and Dana Bailey where I rent out my house to generate capital and sleep in my gym. That's what I'm really looking at. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I will sleep there if that's going to save me money and make me some money uh, in the process. If I need to do that, I'll do that. At this point, I'm just about damn near willing to do anything to get this gym up and running. And the easiest thing is those fucking baseball cards. That I have not looked at in 30 fucking years. I loved those cards when I was a child. Sure, I would probably want to keep some. But to me, it doesn't make any sense to me for me to keep, let's say, that I happen to have LeBron James rookie card sitting in my closet somewhere. Sitting in my house because my mom hid my fucking cards from me. Okay, that shit just sold for like $2 million on eBay a month ago. Okay? So, What? On earth, does it make sense for me to keep LeBron James rookie card? I would sell that shit in a heartbeat so I could have my own fucking gym, start my own business, and live a fulfilled life. Oh, no. You got dreams are nice to have. This is what you'll do. You're going to work at the school district during the daytime. And then if you want to, why, why, why buy a gym? Why would you do that? Why not do personal training? And then you can just train people after work. I said, I don't want to do that because when I get off work, I'm trying to go train my fucking self. You see, you see why your shit doesn't work. It does not fit into the dream, okay? Your idea, as awesome as it is for you from your perspective, works great for you. That does not work for me at motherfucking all. I was just like sitting there going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, okay. I just kept saying that over and over and over again until she fucking hung up. I could not... I was beside myself. It was like, like I said, an out-of-body experience. I was like, so your advice is for me to get another shitty job? I, n- n- well, no. <laughs> did, did you hear yourself? Or were you not listening to me? <laughs> or both? <laughs> I was like, damn, mom. Um... I consider you highly intelligent and hella smarter than me, but that was the dumbest shit I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> I was like, oh, hell no, lady. You, no, mm no. You don't understand. Dreams are nice to have, but you got to work on s- the stability and then you can do your dreams later. I'm like, oh, so work a shitty job until I'm basically dead inside, which I'm virtually there. And then, and then go for my dreams. Okay. (laughs) I like the Gary V approach. Just go work for your fucking dreams and don't listen to anybody else. I was just like, wow, damn, Gary was right. Why do I even bother asking or telling them? Because once I do that, it's like I'm seeking their approval and When I don't get it, I feel like I fucked up. But in a roundabout way, I shouldn't even be asking them in the first place because they don't know. They've taken risks. They, uh, my dad took a risk coming to this country with little to no money and came to this country and a dream and a promise. And, and he did that. He did it. And then when he, once he got to a certain place, 
He played it safe. He doesn't want to take any chances. And that's fine. He's done that. My mom, same thing. She's taken plenty of job risks and it got her to where she's at today. But did she truly get to follow her dream of doing what she wanted to do? Based on what she told me one time, it didn't seem like it. I I guess at one point she had mentioned she wanted to be a lawyer and then got pregnant with me. So I guess she really didn't follow that dream. So I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's very hard for me because I'm like, well, I can't really listen to you because this isn't your dream. It's mine. So I'm just going to have to say, "Mm mm-hmm, okay, (laughs) sure, okay, yeah. (laughs) So I'm just like, oh, no, lady, I'm I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) Like, oh, you put your dreams aside and just work on stability. So I'm like, oh, translation. So be miserable, work at a job you hate your whole fucking life because it's stable than taking a chance or a risk on yourself. Okay, got it. (laughs) Jog (laughs) off. I ain't listening to that shit. And speaking of fucking dreams, I want to give a shout out to the homie Oscar. Or Oscar Forado. My man, my main man at work. Super bright mind. Going on, going up to do big and better things. Got his own CBD line. Uh, getting his personal training stuff done. Studying chemistry. Getting into stocks, trading stocks. My man got his t-shirt line going up, and it's called Culture and Currency. You can check that shit out on my page, at GenT523. I believe at some point they're going to have a Culture and Currency uh, IG page, as well as a website coming soon within the next week or so, I believe. So uh, please support my guy. He's selling shirts, stickers, everything, the whole nine. They're just getting started. I'm very proud of Oscar and his homie for getting this up and running. And t-shirts is a great way to uh, get your thing, get your name, get your brand, get whatever you're trying to sell out there. Uh, He's doing a streetwear thing. He takes great pictures. So he's thinking about throwing some of the pictures he takes up on a shirt. So be on the lookout for that. And I like that he's moving upward. He's he's going after his dream. He's not listening to other people who told him some stupid shit. He's going after his dream and that and he's got that that uh, streetwear line going. So I like that. So shout out to Oscar. Let's see if I've got anything else for you. Good evening. Oh, last Saturday we watched the MSPH wrestling tournament and I was victorious over Bonnie McPontius. Um Boy, this was not how I wanted things to go, that's for sure, because when I called for takeout from my favorite Thai restaurant in town, they told me that it would be an hour wait for fucking Thai fried rice at four o'clock. What? Bitch. I was like, what's going on? Y'all don't have any delivery drivers? They said, no, we're swamped. It's going to take an hour. And I was like, okay, so you're just over-exaggerating, and it'll be ready in like 20 or 30 minutes, right? She's like, oh, no, it's going to be at least an hour. And I was like, what the fuck? And I said, yeah, all right, because I didn't feel like cooking. Never a fucking again. I ain't going to my favorite Thai spot in a, in a while after this shit. Had to wait a fucking hour for me to pick up the food. They didn't even have a driver to drop it off, okay? They were so overwhelmed, so swamped that... They could not even deliver to me, you understand? They had to tell me to come and get it, which is fine because it's just down the street. But I had to wait a fucking hour for Thai fried rice. I've called there and they said, 10 minute, 10 minute. Oh, oh, Rambofra, Thai fried rice, number eight. 10 minute, 10 minute, it ready. They know me when I call. I go, hello. It's, oh, number eight, time for the rice. Rambopra. Ah, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, great. Hello. Yeah, it's me. Um, one hour. What? The fuck, bitch? Holy shit. So, because I had to wait a fucking hour right when I was getting ready to fucking wrestle. My turn to wrestle. For the MSPH Women's Champion Belt. 
They call me, food ready, food ready. And I'm like, motherfucker, no. I'm, I'm in the middle of a Zoom call with my friends. What the fuck? Food ready, food ready. Come get, come get. Number eight, Thai fried rice. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So I was like, sorry, guys. I got to go pick up my fucking food because they don't even have enough people to deliver this fucking shit. So I go down there. It takes for fucking ever to get my pickup that took forever. And I come back and I'm home and miss half the match. And everyone's like, no, Jen, where are you at? And I was like, ah, fuck. Motherfucker. God damn it. I was pissed. But I got to see the end. And I got to see myself stomp McBonnie as out, Climb over the fence and become the MSPH Women's Champion. Hello and still. Uh, great, great night of wrestling from the boys. And you got to give a shout out to Dom at Dom 311. Man, my guy is killing it. Holy shit. He's got my face superimposed in the wrestling characters in the game. And he's got some other friends all superimposed into the game. He did such a good job. My guy should get paid for this shit. Somebody should pay this man. He does a great job with this uh, wrestling game. So, once again, thank you to MSPH Crew, Mad Scientist Party Hour. Please go listen to their podcast. It's like 10 times better than mine, which isn't saying much, <laughs> but it is. Uh, they got a really good show with Shotty, Kevin Kraft, and Jeff Rowe Records. <sighs> and, of course, we're just coming off a week of people just emotionally spent. They want to know who's president. They're saying there's fraud. They're saying there's not fraud. I don't believe there's any fraud. And even if there is fraud. Now, check this out. I did actually see some douchebag in Pennsylvania, like, take a vote and throw it in the trash in the little polling place or something. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But let's say that it was, air quotes, uh, fraudulent. There is still not enough votes to turn it around for dump. Okay? You suck. Bitch, pack your shit. You're fired. <laughs> You suck. Um, and then now, America has voted for four years of suck. We got Uncle Joe. Man, I'm telling you, there would, we would probably do a better job if it was just a fucking board. Like, if it was like the EU or some shit. Like, nobody's in charge. We just got a board of directors, okay? Just like the House and the Senate. We just got like that shit. Like... Congress or whatever, and that's it. There's nobody who overrules them. You just got them little people in there, and they do their little votes. Next. I'm going out of there. Nobody's, nobody's in charge, all right? Just just let it be a fucking board of directors, and call it a fucking date. We don't need a president anymore, okay? Because clearly, they suck donkey dicks. Okay, let's go through the list. Dumpf. Trash. Biden. Soon to be. Trash. Obesity. Trash. Uh, who was that? Who was after that? Oh, Bush trash twice. <laughs> Bill, a ladies man. <laughs> Scott, you grand motherfucker. Bill trash twice. Bush senior trash. Who was before that? Uh, fucking Reagan trash. We have to go pretty far fucking back to find a decent bloke who can run this country. This is incredible. Um, damn. Maybe we had a good president when maybe we had a good president when women were allowed to vote and slavery was abolished. <laughs> maybe that was the last time we had a good president. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> America's been on the get fucked train for a while. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo, I'm just I'm just tired of it. I'm just like, you know what? You dorks in the White House, do what you want to do. I'm going to be doing what I got to do. You know, and if you want to pull some fuck shit or whatever, I'm still going to be a free ass bitch, okay? I'm not going nowhere. If you want to ban, re-ban gay marriage, good. Go fuck yourself. Marriage is shitty as it is. We don't need... Y'all can't blame gay people for your fucking divorce rate. That's some straight bullshit right there, all right? Let's be... Let's keep it 100 right there, okay? <laughs> First of all, y'all banned gay people from getting married, and your divorce rate was still 72%. <laughs> 
Goes up your mother. <laughs> you got nobody else to blame. And then this is the best bit. I, I used to post this pretty regularly on the gram. Y'all hate gay people. Well, so guess what? Tell straight people to stop having gay babies. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is just some some stupid ass shit. I really don't give a fuck unless you're trying to tell me I can't marry who I, I love. And then secondly, if you're going to be pulling the black card again, like Uncle Joe loves to do, he just loves to arrest black people. Kamala Harris just loves to arrest black people. You know, I'm just like, all right, well, use fools. Do what you got to do. And I'm going to be right over here. And uh, when you bring the handcuffs, make sure they're loose because my wrists are all bruised up from jujitsu. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, prison, sending me, to, sending me to jail for being gay or black would probably be the best day ever because I will get three square meals a day. I won't even have to fucking cook. I'll get to exercise and I'll see some hot ass ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> what do you got planned for me uncle joe <laughs> oh god damn it <laughs> oh man jesus christ i'm on fire <laughs> oh man oh shit this week Got to uh, revisit. It had been a year since we had all gotten in our little cars and our buses, our planes, trains, automobiles, and traveled to Austin for Ellis Mania. And I was just going through what little pictures I have. I'm kind of pissed at myself. I didn't take a whole lot of pictures. Because you know why? Because I was busy on fucking Bumble. I was looking for some hot-ass Texas babes. And... (laughs) I wasn't taking pictures with my fucking friends. I took like five pictures with my fucking friends. I'm busy. I'm Bumble and Tinder the whole time. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to find me a Texas lady who is good. (laughs) Austin. (laughs) I was on there looking for some Tenderellas and some (laughs) Bumbleinas. Shit. Oh, man. God damn it. Still have yet to find a decent lady. And I don't have that many pictures of Austin and I can't fucking go back. So lesson fucking learn. Um, going through the memories and looking through stuff. And I, I just knowing that I wasted that time on dating apps while I was on vacation. I mean, you know, you're on vacation. You fuck around a little bit. But I really wasted too much time on the maps and I should have been taking more pictures with friends and just enjoying the moment. So lesson learned. Um, I have officially, I've gone on some dating apps, but I really haven't been looking that much. Maybe the, the least amount of looking I've done in a long time. And that's because I turned off notifications. I turned off all my notifications except for uh, email. Cause I need to know what the schedule is for the gym. Number two, Obviously, I I need email for my eBay store. Number three, uh, I do use Instagram as a business for business stuff sometimes. So I get messages from people. So I left Instagram notifications on. Um, I left. What else did I leave on? I left notifications from snapchat on because hey i gotta know if somebody's sending me a nude hello if some fine young lady is sending me the tatas i need to see them right away (laughs) um i left them too on so email insta and snap And I turned off all notifications on every fucking thing else in my phone. Oh, Periscope, because I want to see the fights. That's it. I got four things, okay? That's it. My life has never been better than ever before. Less time on the phone. My screen time's down. I'm more productive. And uh, it feels great. I haven't been uh, doing the dating apps like I should because I really just kind of don't give a shit anymore. (laughs) I've kind of passed the point of no return. I'm just so focused on losing this weight and trying to be a better 
a, a fighter with my kickboxing or with my Muay Thai and, and getting better at jujitsu. I just don't have fucking time to be like, hey, lady, what's up? How you doing? I don't want to talk to you. You're weird. Or, hey, lady, what's up? How you doing? I like you, but I don't have time. Okay. Hey, lady, what's up? Hey, lady, what's up? I'm a lady pretending to be a man. Or I'm a lady in this picture, but I'm really a man who's trying to be catfish. I don't have fucking time for this shit. I'm tired of wasting time. So I figure I'll use, utilize my time a little bit more wisely now. So my focus has been training, training, and training. <laughs> I really don't care about a whole lot else. And that's perfectly all right. And you know you've got me when I'm not thinking about dating. And that's taking a long ass time to not be thinking about dating. <laughs> You have to be really fucking good to get my attention off of ladies, okay? So I'm excited about training, about uh, learning new things, about seeing other people learn stuff. I just, that's all I care about. It's just getting better and being a better person than I was yesterday. Some thoughts and takeaways I will leave you with none other than me main lady, Christine Hassler who's got something lovely to share with you, and I hope that this will help you. And one more thing. I just want to say, a friend of mine, I will not mention his name, but he knows who he is, is going on a journey, a deep spiritual journey. A journey of not jacking off. I am (laughs) sending thoughts and prayers for my friend. Who is deciding not to wank off for an undisclosed amount of time? Uh, you know, it's good to every once in a while to wis- restrict yourself from things. If they're, if it's getting out of hand, you know, cut back. So he is going on a, a, a existential wank off journey. Well, actually, he is not wanking off. A non-wanking off journey. And I wish him well. I will say a prayer and I hope you will join me as well. Nomari Patru Spiritu Santi. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Yo! Hey, listen. Um, do what you gotta do. That's all I gotta say. Do what you gotta do. So I'm sending... Uh, Send, please send all your thoughts and your prayers to my friend as he is deciding not to wank off for an undisclosed time in order to hope, in, in hopes of recentering and focusing his mind, spirit, and body. Salute to my friend. Whew. And on that note, please like, share, and subscribe to Ramble Parade, RambleParade.com. Truth sayers and lies slayers. I will leave you with Christine Hasler with some positive words of advice this week. But until next time, this is Rambo Radio. I'm out. Peace. The intensity of the world, especially here in the U.S., I just want to remind you again to be very, very mindful of what you allow in your mind and your self-care practices. So there are a bunch of narratives going on in the external world. And just remember that you are the official narrator of your mind. You get to choose what you want to believe. You get to choose what thoughts you allow in. Sometimes it's hard to control the first thought that we have, but we can be aware of, hey, the thoughts that I'm thinking, this thought that's creating fear in me and anxiety in me or anger in me or judgment in me. I don't want to feel those things. So let me think a different thought. Let me think a thought that brings more compassion, more empathy, more connection, more hope. So it's, it's really, really the time to be mindful of your mind and your thoughts because yes, we're all impacted by what's going on in the world. And we are also sovereign beings and we can choose what we want our individual experience to look like. And sometimes it feels like we can't help it because there's so much past and trauma that's activated. So if you feel like you can't get dominion 
over what's happening inside of you, please, please get some help. What you're doing that's given you a sense of identity and purpose and what that's costing you. And is it time to evolve out of the people pleaser, the go-to person, the nice guy, the reliable one, whatever it may be, and set some boundaries so you can really evolve into the next chapter of what your purpose looks like? Is it to be more of a leader? Is it to empower other people? Is it to have more time for yourself? You know, a lot of these identities have some huge costs associated with them. So think about that. Next, think about what boundaries you need to put in place so that you break some patterns and just expect it to ruffle some feathers and it not to be easy at first. However, the long-term effects of setting boundaries are beautiful. So keep that in mind. And finally, what are the elephants you can set up? The simple, the simple, not too time consuming thing that weigh a lot, that make a big, big difference. You know, just for me, my breath work in the morning, huge, takes seven minutes, but makes a massive difference in my health, in my mood, in my vitality, just my little breath work followed by my eight minute meditation, 15 minutes, sometimes I go a little longer if I want to do a Dr. Joe Dispenza meditation, but most of the time, 15 minutes, it's an elephant. Taking a bath at night, 20 minutes, elephant. Turning my phone off at 8 p.m. Simple, big difference. So what are the elephants? What are the big things that don't have to take a lot of time? You don't have to stack gazillion books. (laughs) You just need to pick those few things that make a big difference. You can do it. All right, everybody. That's the show for today. 